Hello there, my name is Fernando, and I'm a developer advocate here at GitLab. And recently, we've introduced several enhancements to our secret detection within GitLab as of versions 17 and 17.1. These features include the usage of remote rule sets or overrides, secret push protection in beta, and more. Now let's take a look and further examine these features. As of GitLab 17, it's now possible to override or disable rules via remote rule sets. Remote rule sets offer a scalable way to configure rules in a single place and then apply those rules across multiple projects. Note that these projects can have separate permissions, allowing you to adhere to the principle of least privilege. In the future, we will extend this by adding support for extending actual rules via remote rule sets. We've also advanced vulnerability tracking for secret scanning. We now identify when the same secret has moved within a file due to refactoring or unrelated changes. A new finding is no longer created if a leak moves within a file or a new leak of the same value appears within the same file. This makes tracking vulnerabilities much simpler to manage. In GitLab 17.1, secret push protection is now in beta. Secret push protection checks the content of each commit pushed to GitLab. If any secrets are detected, the push is blocked and information is displayed about the commit such as the commit ID, file name and line number that contains the secret, and the type of secret. By using secret push protection, you can now prevent secrets from making it into your repository, preventing the need for deleting and rotating keys. In order to overwrite rule sets, I must create a .gitlab directory and a secret detection rule set.toml. Here, I will add the overrides that specify what to change or more what to override when a particular secret is detected. For example, if we detect an SSH private key, we can change its description, the name that's displayed for the vulnerability, as well as its severity. Now let's go to the project where we will load this override. Then in my .gitlab CIYAML, I must include the secret detection template and add a variable specifying the location of this override file. Now let's take a look at a merge request with this override. We can see that all of our security policies are still valid even with these overrides, preventing insecure code from making it to production. When we click on a vulnerability, we can see that the name has been changed along with the description and severity. These changes are also applied to vulnerabilities found on the default branch via the vulnerability report. When clicking on the SSH key detected vulnerability, we can see the changes made here as well. Now let's take a look at secret push protection. In order to enable secret push protection, simply go to the secure tab and click on security configuration. Now scroll down to the secret push protection section and click on the radio button for it to be enabled. Now using the CLI, I will add a secret to my readme file. This particular secret is a GitLab access token. These tokens are similar to passwords and can be used to authenticate with the GitLab API as well as with Git using HTTP basic authentication. After the readme has been changed, I'll do a git add, and then I'll perform a git commit with a message. Now when I perform a git push, GitLab's secret push protection automatically detects the secret and prevents the push. Here we have detailed information on why the push was blocked, including the location of the secret, its type, and the commit it was located in. This feature prevents you from checking in secrets, which will require you to rotate these secrets as well as scrub the repository data. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed. To learn more about the GitLab 17 and 17.1 17 releases, see the links in the description, and make sure to click that like and subscribe button 